It's Porsche's least expensive model, but it's not their best selling. Kind of an odd conundrum. So what do you do about that? First of all, you make it look a lot more macho. Let's drive the 2013 Porsche Boxster and check the tech. Now, some perspective for you non Porsche files. The Boxster and its cousin, the Cayman, are the only mid engine cars in the Porsche production line. And arguably, therefore, they have the best cred. Mid engine cars are the ones that always tend to handle the best. And yet, the Boxster's always kind of gotten that little pat on the head, like, aw, aren't you cute? Porsche remains the oddball among German cars with a touch screen and a little small controller compared to Audi, BMW and Mercedes who have non-touch screens and elaborate control knobs. Porsche then hampers themselves by having one of the more non-intuitive user interfaces. It almost feels like it was designed to be tidy more than usable. Not awful, just a bit opaque. And it's in a foot race with Honda for most years since a needed overhaul. This round dial screen on the right side is one of my favorites. A lot can go on in there, and it's always well laid out. All the modern inputs are here, AM, FM, satellite radio, disc, Bluetooth streaming, auxiliary, USB as well for your iPod. When that iPod's connected, the scrolling and navigation are quick and clean. Sport mode will sharpen up your powertrain responsiveness. Suspension button here will firm things up underneath. The Porsche Active suspension is a full adaptive rig if you option that. Missing in our car is the Sport Chrono package. You can always spot it by the analog chronograph in the dash. The Auto Start Stop Defeat button didn't get much use from me. I left Auto Start Stop engaged and I don't think it shut the car down more than twice in a day, so fine by me. Cup holders were a big leave out in the original Boxster. Now Porsche seems to be compensating with these elaborately designed swing arm units that can actually be dressed with the aluminum cover when deployed. Wow. Okay, so this 2013 Boxster, as you can see, has a lot in common with its siblings in terms of the cabin tech and even the cabin design. But things are very different back here, or should I say, about here. Tucked in the middle where you can't see it is the Boxster engine, 2.7 liter, direct injection, flat six. Dry sump design, that means the oil doesn't just drip down to some belly pan, it's pumped in under pressure from an offshore reservoir. That allows the engine to be less high and sit lower. That drops the car's center of gravity. The numbers, 265 horsepower, a rather slim 206 foot-pounds of torque. Rev this guy. Zero to 60, five and a half seconds while doing 20, 30 MPG. Now those numbers are for our car, a six-speed manual. Also available is a seven-speed dual clutch. They call it a PDK. That'll reduce your zero to 60 time by three tenths and raise your MPG by two miles. So it's a win-win, but it does add 3,200 bucks. And the beauty of a Boxster is that it's very pure and it's mid-engine. It's their simplest car, yes, but it's one of the most fun to drive. There's not too much power. It's not a ponderous machine. The handling is really tremendous, even though it does get sneered at a bit. Now we're driving a standard Boxster, not an S or anything hotter. And I like that because you can and will use all of what this car can do. You can't say that for most Porsches. They have too much on tap. You aren't able to drive all of it. In this case, you can, and it's really exhilarating. The fit and finish on this car has always been good, but in this generation, they've really stepped up the um, sophistication. This is no longer a raw kind of car in terms of cabin comfort. Totally dialed in, very quiet when the top's up, uh, very well behaved now with the top down. And of course, the big difference here is you've got this new, very grown-up Porsche cabin now that's taken DNA from modern 911s and really from the Panameras where this whole design look got started. It's a real sybaritic type of Boxster, even though it's meant to be their, you know, leanest experience. All the controls are very direct and fairly heavy on this car, another Boxster trait. It's a great clutch and gearbox, not my favorite in the Porsche line, but given the price, I guess that's okay. Steering response is very direct and clean. Uh, I'm fine with that it being in sport mode. There's not that much more to be dug out with sport mode on. 
and the ride's plenty firm without getting into the sport chassis. But you've got those available if you get onto a really great road or if you track this thing. The auto start stop with a manual is a real messy affair. I don't like auto start stop on manual gearboxes. I think it's okay on automatics. Uh, it was very uneven and unpredictable on this car. Overall, I'd say this. Ignore the sneers that are attendant with a Boxster. Just get in and drive one and enjoy the experience. And don't worry about what everyone's saying or thinking about you. This is a great driving car. And obviously, it's your best bargain in the Porsche world. You can configure any Porsche a thousand ways, but to make it easy, let's go CNET style by spending 55.5. And here's how we do it. 50,450 is the base car plus destination. Add the infotainment system with Bose option. That package is 4560 for touchscreen LCD navigation head unit, Bose audio, satellite radio, and HD radio. To add voice control of nav, phone, and radio functions is a paltry but a la carte 520 bucks. And if you want the PDK gearbox, that's 3200 as I mentioned. There is no rear camera available on a Boxster, and when the top's up, you'll wish there was.